the network. But um, I remember a few weeks back, um, we were talking about like uh, building a narrative for an artist and like how important it was mm. and like how it's separate from a brand, but mm. it ties into what your brand is. Mm. So um, I kind of like went back and looked at some um, certain artists like that may not be similar to me as far as music, but they have like a narrative that I would like to kind of incorporate into my brand. Um, and honestly, the main one was like Russ, because I really like um, the underdog kind of story that he tells mm-hmm. with, um, you know, with everything, but not not with the air of arrogance that he kind of brings with it. So um, I was wondering if you had any suggestions for like ways to kind of convey that message of, um, you know, trying to uh, come from the bottom as an underdog kind of thing um, as a, a producer slash artist. Yeah, I think, I think of the, like the simple answer is convey it in like all of your content and you can the way that you start to engage with it and talk to you your fan base. So the, the way that Rush gets it off the most is through, I would say through like interviews and like doing like his own live. So I mean like pretty much like putting out videos and speaking. Like, MC, like if we break it down to that point, you know the most about Russ because Russ speaks a lot. He does like YouTube shit. Um, or he tweets a lot. He posts things where he talks about certain stuff that lets you start to kind of put an idea of like this is who that person is. And then just I think the types of things that he speaks on is what's kind of giving him like that whole, you know, king of the underdogs type thing that he's really running with now. Um like how to convey that, I don't think is, is as straightforward. Because I like I couldn't tell you how like I couldn't tell you specific content that Russ does to kind of put that out because it's kind of like is that everything that we see from him. Um so I think like a lot of that just comes back to grassroots or ground level like content that builds like a face brand of you, like starts to build have be able to uh, put people to where they can put like your face to your name. They look very like face front with content. People know what you look like, right? Like very like right. face. Producers, we think of like Metro. I don't know, like Sunny Digital. Like there are certain producers who put themselves out to where they're recognizable as people and they're recognizable as people. I think that kind of plays into it. And then just as you build people off of that who like, like who you know, care about that, like care about who the producer is and stuff like that. And you just start to speak a lot and talk a lot and engage with a lot in the tone that kind of puts him up like, okay, he's a real confident dude. Um, he also gives out information that's, you know, helping the underdogs. Or uh, I'm trying to think of how to like simplify in a way like it's kind of general, but like I think that's the, that's the best way to explain it. That's the way I can explain it. I have a suggestion of how you can maybe relate it to generality. Uh, you could possibly the narrative of the industry, like the major labels versus independent. So you could be like, oh, I'm independent. I'm the underdog. I'm an independent artist fighting against these big major labels. You should root for me because I'm the independent underdog. Uh, wait, the, wait. This rapper in Miami, Puya. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he used to call himself underground some shit. Uh, under, underdog some shit. But he, I think he would have songs called like underdog whatever. So you could possibly check him out and see what he did because I think he he rocked with that narrative, and he would he would he would say like oh fuck labels I'm never gonna sign fuck that shit, and he would rep he would kind of rock with that narrative of like independent versus industry. Right, right, and that's that's um like a really strong like sense that I want to kind of push like not necessarily specifically like independent versus industry, but like how Puyi's big thing is like. I can do this, like, whether I got the machine behind me or not kind of thing. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, more humble, like... like. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, actually thinking about... Well, not thinking, I'm, like, 99% about to do, like, a mini podcast series 
because I saw like um on one of Sean's videos like some months ago, I had caught and saw like um how is it growing form of media and it's a good way to kind of connect with fans because um like we're all kind of fighting for attention and a lot of music listeners are going over to like the podcast space now. And so um I was gonna do like a mini podcast series of kind of like um giving more details and stuff about myself because a lot of people DM me like, yo, who are your influences? Yo, what made you get started? And I'm like, well I could just kind of cover that with this. And That's um That's dope. Yeah. And also kind of like explain some of the music, like have um guests on there that are like feature artists and stuff like that and kind of tell the story behind it because um but I didn't want to be like too underdog in that like because my story is kind of that like coming from like being homeless and you know all this dirty shit that happened to me where I had to like start over I didn't want to like keep beating people over the head with it where it's like, like all right it's episode three and you know now I'm telling you guys about um, what I'm working on next, but first let me remind you, yo, when I was homeless, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to go too hard with it. You know what I'm saying? Man, it was like, a lot of that is just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't try to think of your brand as, as just like a, a straight, it's, it's very straight, it's straightforward. That. Like, your brand literally should, I think, be built around like your personality and stuff that you would really talk about and generally feel about. Like, that is a part of the story, but it's not part of the story. So, you know what I'm saying? Just like in real life. You wouldn't talk about that all the time. The content you put out to the fans should be the same way. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it comes up in the conversation, if it's a driving point of a story or something that had to do with a song, then yeah, you bring it up, you talk about it. That's how you let fans know. But I, I agree with you. Like, if it has nothing to do with the situation, don't feel like you have to bring it up and remind them of the situation. Because you know? um, that's, I think those are the best ways that brands are built is different parts of the story are either dropped or reinforced through different things in content rights. Like, if you have a song, a line in the, in the song, is, uh, let's say you have a, a song that you worked on is talking about it, and like you said, the podcast is where you break down the backstory behind it so that people know what influences part of the song, what influences the story that is the song, and then you have, I don't know, like a visual down the line, you know what I'm saying, that kind of portrays it. Like, that's that's kind of how brand brand stories get told through various content stuff. Like, you spread it out through different media, but you don't always focus on it on one thing. Right, right. Okay, bet. Um, that that really gave me um <laughs> what I needed to hear because I'm like, Dad, like I wanna, I wanna give this message, but I don't wanna be annoying with it to where, like, people are gonna be like, oh yeah, that's the, that's the dude. Even if they like me, like, oh, that's that one dude who always talking about such and such thing, you know, and kind of walking that line. But um, you saying it about like treating it like conversation. And, and talking about what I would naturally talk about actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's the network.